Do you struggle to focus? I reckon most of you believe that the ability to focus is something that you're born with. But I disagree. I believe focus can be learned, as I did, and it allowed me to do this. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure you're all familiar with this three-layered Rubik's Cube, but cubing has come a long way since the 1980s. Now, there are Rubik's Cubes ranging from just two layers all the way up to 33 layers, and some that are called Rubik's Cubes but aren't even shaped like a cube. Now, not all of these puzzles are used to compete in competitions, but let me introduce you to one one so weird that knowing how to solve all the Rubik's Cubes in the world would not help you in the slightest with this one. It's considered by many, including myself, to be the Mount Everest of speed cubing, and I am yet to meet someone who has been able to solve it all on their own. Let me introduce you to my arch enemy, the square one. On first glance, it looks like it turns just like a regular Rubik's Cube with three layers just like this. But, and this is where I think your minds might melt, <laughs> you can turn it into a different shape through the center like this. <laughs> Here. I'll comp com complete the turn. And then, when you mix those moves together, you get a mess. <laughs> and this is the reason that this puzzle is 14,000 times more difficult than the standard Rubik's Cube. Now, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this puzzle, because it is one of the fastest and highest-ranking events that I compete in, but it has provided many challenges for me over the years. For instance, at the Australian Nationals 2018, I had made the final for this event, and I was in the running to make the top three. I had prepared for months beforehand, doing thousands of solves, in preparation for this moment. I was doing my final three turns on my last solve, and then I dropped the cube <laughs> and turned it an extra five times, meaning I had to start the solve all the way from the beginning. And by the time I'd finished it, I'd missed my chance at making the top three. Now, not only had I dropped the cube messing up that one solve, I had dropped it in front of all of my Australian idols, and in front of 70 spectators who have stood not even two meters away from me as I was sat in the front row. As you could imagine, I was pretty embarrassed. I was also angry. In fact, I was furious. I had just wasted months of preparation in the blink of an eye. For six months, I barely touched the square one. And when I did solve it, I felt like I'd been in a physical fight with it afterwards. But eventually, I realized that nothing anyone else said or did was going to change what happened at the, at the national championships. It was going to be me that had to change. I had to learn to focus. Now, focus can be broken into three simple concepts. The first being breaking the cycle of not being able to focus. I'm sure we've all been in the situation where you're doing something, you're not really enjoying it, you're making some mistakes, you start to get annoyed, lose motivation, and this continues, until you eventually stand up and walk away to do something completely different. And the only way to break this cycle is to learn how you focus. You see, focus is also a cycle. Think about the times when hours have felt like minutes. Time has just flown by. You were in the zone and nothing could stop you. That is focus. But you may ask, what is the difference between these two cycles? That is what I call the trigger. See, you have a trigger, you have a trigger. All of you have different triggers. Some of you may even have a couple of them, but they are the reason that you feel the need to focus on something. It's what you enjoy about it. It could be the competitive aspect of it. it could be the reveal of a plot in a storyline, 
or it could be the understanding that only comes from hours and hours of research to understand all the fine details. Whatever it is, use it to your advantage. Apply it to what you can't focus on. Make it something that you would enjoy doing. Do whatever it takes to make you feel the need to focus. The second thing is goal setting. Now, we all know about goal setting, so I'll keep this brief. Setting goals is very important, but don't make them too easy and don't make them too difficult either. Keep it in that Goldilocks zone, but most importantly, keep them frequent. It's as simple as that. The third thing is being comfortable with failing. I need you all to accept one thing for me. You are all going to fail. Let that just sink in for a bit. <laughs> you are all going to fail. And I agree, failing sucks. It's annoying and tiring. But you need to change your perspective on failing. You see, failure is your friend. It lets you know that you aren't quite doing something right just yet. It's a barrier in the way of your success. But once you work through it, don't just move on. Look back. Learn from it. What worked, what didn't. There's no easy way around it. You just have to chip away at it constantly and consistently until you get through. But use what you've learned during this time to help break through future barriers. No matter how hard the barrier may seem, you will always be able to work through it with enough time. So, how did this all apply to me and my arch enemy, the square one? First, break the cycle. I had to acknowledge that my feelings of being angry and annoyed at a bit of plastic was just stupid. I realized that throughout this process, I was going to be getting angry at this puzzle quite a lot, but it would be worth it at the end. The second thing, goal setting. The World Championships were coming up in 2019, and I was determined to not make a fool of myself a second time. This time, I would be competing in front of all of my international speedcubing idols, about a thousand spectators, and a live stream broadcast across the whole world. I was determined to make the top 50 for the square one and to have my worst souls be no longer than 10 seconds. Third thing, being comfortable with failing. Improvement in speed cubing is incredibly slow, so I was going to have to spend hundreds and hundreds of souls not reaching my goals and being angry. But I learned from these souls. I learned how to turn the cube properly, what was the right thing to do in specific situations, and what would be too risky to do on the day of the championships. So, how did I go? Did I get 10 seconds on all my souls? I did, in every single round I competed in. Did I make the top 50? I did, but in fact, I actually made the top 20, getting 18th in my best round. Thank you. <laughs> and since the World Championships, I've used these techniques over and over again to improve a further two seconds, which may not sound like much, but in the world of speed cubing, that is an improvement of literally hundreds of places in the world rankings. Now, just because you know how to focus and know how to use these three things doesn't mean it gets any easier. Focusing is hard, it's really hard, and it's tiring. But once you understand yourself, and understand how focus works a little better, you can access it at your will, and all of you could do this. Thank you. <laughs>